All right, we should be live. What's going on, everybody? Let me just make sure I got my systems going over here and make sure I mute myself so I don't hear myself on my computer over here. This is going to be episode one of who knows how long. Um, brand new series I'm getting started doing here on uh, social media. So we'll be on YouTube. We'll also be on Facebook. And I'm excited to be doing this in partnership with Melon App. So if you guys are not familiar with Melon App, I want you to make sure that you check out the pinned comment, the pinned post, uh, because Melon App is making this all happen. So definitely check them out. Uh, let me get their information on the screen so you guys can uh, show some love to Melon App because we are going to go through a lot when it comes to the 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 live streaming aspect when it comes to how to show up on video, you know, talking about equipment to use. So being able to have a company reach out and say, hey, we want to help educate your audience um, and making sure that they understand how they can easily go live and do this live streaming thing is going to be awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to bringing my guests on. I've already got some people I've reached out to to be guests and contributors here on the show so we are going to go live mark your calendars right now we're going to go live every monday at 7 p.m eastern standard time all right every monday 7 p.m eastern standard time we're going to go live and we're going to talk about all things live streaming all things video related all things techie related um and let you guys hear some stories and obviously answer some questions because i'm big on the education piece so i want to answer some questions so let me see who's joining me tonight i got my chat right over here so if you're here live let me know and if you're on replay i want you to type in replay but i want to shout out everyone that is here live so let me know that you're watching in the chat let me know where you're watching from in the chat. Um, that way I can make sure I, I see all of you all over here. So I'm going to see Chris, my guy that's in Charlotte. Uh, Chris actually uh, helped me this past week. Um, or I should say he I helped him I, either way. But we tag team an awesome conference down in Florida this past week. It was it feels like it was like five days, but I think it was four. Uh, but it was an amazing conference where we live streamed it. You know, we live streamed it to uh, an audience of people that had purchased their ticket. And we, if you guys had a chance to look at the YouTube video I posted today, it was part one of that live stream uh, setup. So I went through some of the equipment. So stay tuned. There's a part two of that video that's getting edited now. So if you haven't seen part one, check that out. Part two is being edited um, and shout out to Chris that uh, was there to help support in that effort. Miss Carmelita is here. Good to see you here on YouTube. Uh, Carmelita is so awesome. She actually is the connect for that conference. And so uh, unfortunately, didn't get the chance to see her live at this event, but there are many more coming soon. So good to see you here on YouTube. Mr. Emmanuel, West Africa. Man, what's going on? Good to see you. 1002 there. Okay, so not too big of a time difference where um, you can't catch me live. So good to see you here as well. So, oh, who else? Charles from Delaware. I want to make sure that I call you out. Charles, you're just a couple states north of me. So that's awesome. Good to have you here um, in the live stream tonight. So um, I just got back, y'all, um, from the, the conference in Florida. And I haven't had a chance to set up everything yet. So you're, you're kind of seeing my setup. It looks somewhat normal that we usually have, but I haven't set up everything yet. Literally right behind me are two Pelican cases full of equipment that need to be taken out. So I've only taken out so far uh, my ATEM setup, my microphone and my monitors. Literally everything else is still in the box. Um, what's pretty cool is when I got back home, I had some new equipment show up. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys are interested, we may we may get to that during this show. So uh, we'll go for about an hour every show, every episode. So definitely between 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you jump on here, We'll be talking this this techie live streaming language. So good to have all of you guys on here. Let me see who else just joined in here. I see Mr. Riley's World. What's going on? Antoine always showing up. What's going on? 
Sir Jones, how's it going in Af Africa, South Africa? Good to see you guys representing today. All right, cool. Um, like I said, I'm excited because I've been wanting to do like a like a series, like teaching and educating in real time. And using the live platforms is a great way to do that. So I encourage you guys to ask questions um, and to give me feedback on different things that you may want to see during the show, during these these live episodes, these live trainings. OK, um, your feedback is is definitely wanted. OK, um, one of the things that I want to really kind of dive into tonight for our episode one is how to get started in this live streaming uh, in general. Now, when I first got started live streaming, it was probably about four years ago. And if you guys remember the Periscope platform, um, that's kind of where I really started to go live more. Now, right before that platform, I had to reach out to a, a friend of mine down in Atlanta and I said, hey, I said, Evan, uh, I said, what was that platform that we went live on before Periscope? And it was a platform called Blab. It was a social platform, a video platform called Blab. And you could go live to their platform. And it had this box of four where it was like four people and you could have this conversation. It was called Blab. And then I moved over to Periscope. So if anybody remembers Blab, put that in the comments. Um, and if anybody has used Periscope before, put that in the comments, okay? Because those were my platforms that I got started on. And when I got started on Periscope, I was really there to listen. I wasn't there to actually go live and talk to people or anything like that. I was just there to listen. And uh, a friend of mine now, uh, at the time, uh, this guy, I was like, he's pretty awesome to follow, you know, pretty cool. And then we connected and his name is George. And you guys will get a chance to meet uh, Mr. George Howard. I definitely have already reached out to him to be the first guest um, here on the show. And what's going on, Phil? Good to see you here. And when I reached out to George, I said, uh, or when we connected rather on Periscope, he said, hey, you're really good at this, this, this tech thing, this, this live streaming thing. You should teach it on Periscope. And I was like, no, I was definitely apprehensive to showing up on live video and talking like that's just not me. I'm an introvert by nature. So trying to show up on live video and you know overthinking it and you know not wanting to mess up not wanting to hear the negative criticisms and all of that that goes along with showing up on video i didn't want to do it uh, but he really encouraged me that you know i would bring value to an audience of people that could gain could gain some wisdom and some insight onto how to do it so if you have never live streamed don't want to live stream, I'm going to encourage you as well to get started live streaming. Okay. So that's what we're going to be going through tonight. And when George reached out to me, y'all, um, I was, I was already familiar with how live streaming just worked, you know, from my background. And we, and we started going live. I, I started going live on Periscope, trying to get my feet wet. You know, how do you click the buttons first? Right. So it, it didn't take me too long to get set up on clicking buttons. That's kind of what I do. But that, you know, overcoming fear of going live to showing up on a consistent basis of going live to having to look at the camera lens, like actually remembering not to look off to the side all the time, but actually looking at the camera lens is super important. And when I got started going live, it, it started to allow me to get comfortable because I was doing it on a regular basis. And I was teaching people different softwares, how to go live. And a lot has changed in that time frame. I remember doing my very first webinar um, because I wasn't in like the you know business space of selling courses and classes or anything like that. So it was all new to me. And I, I did a webinar on how to start live streaming because it was the new hot thing coming to these platforms, right? And at the time, if you guys remember this, re give me a one in the comments if you remember when live streaming from your computer was kind of released, all right? Give me a one in the comments because at one point we were just going live from our mobile devices 
but then was the introduction of software that allowed you to go live from your computer. And when that happened, I was like, okay, this is my lane because I could essentially do like screen shares. So that was kind of my first my first real comfort when it came to live streaming. Okay. So I had to find my comfort thing. Let me see how many of you guys remember that. Uh, Farrah Jackson, what's going on? Said first met you on Periscope. Yes. Yes. So the Periscope days, you know, I, I have so many uh, people that I still connect with from those days. Now, when, when the introduction of this going live from your computer happened, it was like a game changer because it allowed people to share their screen and show presentations. It allowed them to do on-screen graphics. And that's one of the things that you see right now is I have the little lower third um, graphic. And these things weren't necessarily new to me now. Like when everybody sees it now and they're not like new concepts. So when when these graphics kind of came in and took took uh, over my live streams, I would show like fire and stuff on the graphics and I would have my name, all kinds of stuff just to like show people the possibilities with live streaming. And now we have software like Melon app that make it way easier to go live. Now, four years ago, it was pretty easy to go live. It, it, it was software, hit go live and you can do custom configurations and everything and you can still do that too but now with web-based apps you don't even have to install anything on your computer to go live so imagine going from it, it's crazy how fast technology evolves right first you you wanted to go live and you had to buy all this like studio equipment that costs you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to go live and now we literally can go live from anywhere in the world on our computers. Now, I prefer to go live from my computers. We all know that you can go live from your smartphones, but I just personally prefer to go live from my computer because it allows me to do on-screen graphics and lower thirds and interviews and call to actions, all that stuff that um, my entrepreneurs and my ministry leaders, you know, visually the presentation looks a lot better. So uh, let me know in the chat if you guys prefer to go live from your, those of you that do go live, let me ask you that. If you prefer to go live from your smartphone when you go live, like maybe you're on the beach like I was last week. Maybe you just want to go live from your smartphone or maybe you like to go live from your computer maybe you do a show maybe uh you run your media ministries uh live stream or maybe you just like to go live from the house it's comfortable you got your setup you got your lights you got your microphones you got maybe a big old monitor so let me know which way you guys prefer to go live uh let me check out the chat here marvin is in st louis what's going on marvin good to see you Carmelita says, Melon is so easy and their support team is very helpful. Thanks for introducing me to it. Awesome. I'm glad you love the platform. The platform is awesome. Um, and we're, we're going to get into it in some future episodes. And you guys will see me upload some videos on different use cases and different functionality of the platform. And every Monday, you're going to see me using Melon. So uh, that is exactly how I'm live streaming tonight's show is through the web-based software of Melon. And now I'm just happen to be streaming it on my Mac mini, but it doesn't matter what computer you use. So if, whether you're team Apple, whether you're team PC, it, you can just log in from anywhere in the world and go live on Melon. So it's amazing, uh, the platforms and all the features that are available to us now. Um, let me see here, comments here. Chris says he prefers to go live from the computer. Uh, C. Charles said from the computer. Carmelita says prefer from the computer. Um, Diaper, hope I said your name right, says I want to try both. You can definitely try both for sure. Uh, Charles says, sorry to ask this question uh, of order. I've never live streamed, but uh, here to learn. I bought an AB Cans auto tracking PTZ with 20X NDI. Is this a good camera? Awesome. Yeah. Charles, you are in the right place. So, um, yeah, we were, we're, that's what the show is tonight is like getting started with live streaming, the basics of it. So definitely, um, we're in the right place tonight. 
Uh, when it comes to the camera, I love the camera. Let me know, Charles, what you're using that camera for as well in the comments. Uh, but uh, the, I did a YouTube video on the AV Cans PTZ camera. Uh, so AV Cans had reached out and they wanted to have me talk about the camera, review the camera, and I actually installed it. Uh, at my local ministry because we were looking to upgrade our cameras and I'm just a huge fan of PTZ cameras in general because they give you the the ability to pan tilt and zoom so you literally can zoom in and zoom out and you can control them with a joystick or a remote so instead of having just a single shot you can really create multiple shots and if you use multiple PTZ cameras then you'll really be able to create you, you make it look like a broadcast studio essentially so um, that's what I set up at the conference this last week and then on October 1st and 2nd I'll actually be doing a very similar if not the same setup and showing multiple PTZs together in their use cases so I'm a huge fan of PTZ cameras uh, while I'm talking about that, let me make sure that I give you guys that information. So it, it was pretty awesome to be able to get out and um, get out and you know do that live stream conference and you know use the equipment in a different environment. So I'm going to put in the in the comments here in the in the chat uh, a next conference that I will be at. So not only will I be helping produce the live stream. I'll actually be a speaker as well. So the conference is called Bootstrapping Your Way to Success. And one of the, the subjects I'm going to be talking about is using the tech, using uh, the the live streaming aspect of it. And shout out again to Melanap uh, because they're going to be a sponsor at this event as well. So if you guys haven't already, make sure uh, you check out Melanap. You can go to melanap.live and actually get started trying it for free, completely free to get started uh, using their platform. So if you're, if you're brand new to the live streaming space, or maybe you've been using the live streaming uh, platforms before, but you want to try something new, definitely something to check out. Uh, Melon app has some great software. So let me show you guys this, and we'll get into, we'll get into some real meat and potatoes here about live streaming uh, and getting started here. So let me cancel this and show you here. All right, so here's the event that I'll be speaking at, and I, I put a link inside of the YouTube comment section into the YouTube chat, and you guys can check this out. But it's called Bootstrapping Your Way to Success. So it's essentially going to be a two days. It's going to be in the DMV area, so it's going to be a Friday and a Saturday. And if you guys are in business, if you're in ministry, if you're looking to level up, if you're looking to figure out how to just get everything working and running, we've got some amazing people coming. Uh, let me kind of go through some of the people. Uh, George Hawkins, he's actually the senior pastor at the location where we're going to be holding this event at High Calling Ministries. Now, Pastor George Hawkins is a live streamer. He, uh, he live streams every Monday through Friday early in the morning. So it's pretty amazing to see how he's incorporated live streaming into his ministry. So not only does he live stream his ministry services twice a week, uh, he actually goes live himself on his page. So there are so many ways and people that can use live streaming. It's a powerful tool. He has a really good audience of people that show up every single morning for him um we got my guy les squire jr he's a branding specialist so excited to be able to see him in the same room again we have jennifer J. she's a business and systems uh, specialist so if you need help getting your systems in place so you don't have to do everything you let the systems work for you she's going to be there you're going to have sheree a brooks jr she's an author speaker and coach amazing woman um, and she is the backbone to mr glenn p brooks jr who's the host of this event um, he's my coach he's amazing at what he does if you've never heard him speak before he has a youtube channel as well where you can go and check him out and listen to him as well i'm actually a contributor in his community called mmc and uh, it's it's an awesome community to be a part of so i was invited to speak and like I said, I'll be setting it up 
Um, and uh, actually, Chris, that's in the chat here, he's going to be at that event too. So he's going to be helping. I think, Chris, are you DJ in that event too? Um, Chris's DJ, DJ-ness almost came out of him this past uh, weekend. Uh, after we live streamed the event, there was a, a party after the event. And of course, the other DJ is rolling in and he said that he had the urge to just get on the tables, get on the ones and twos. <laughs> um, so Chris is going to be there as well, as well. So looking forward to that event. If you guys haven't already check that out, definitely do that as well. All right. So let's get started on some content content here um, and see what we can uh, answer for you guys tonight. So like I said, uh, I see a lot of a lot of new people have joined here. If you're just now joining in, welcome. Monty Weaver here. If you don't know already, make sure you guys like this video. Um, make sure that you guys also check out melonout.live. If you're just joining Melonat, definitely uh, want to Thank them for allowing us allowing us to come together on a weekly basis uh, by sponsoring this show so we can get some work done, you guys. OK, so I, I, like I said, I told you my story, how I kind of got into live streaming um, and been doing it for quite some time. And once once Periscope kind of really took off for me and that audience grew. Then I also started live streaming on YouTube or on Facebook rather. And then I started to get into the YouTube and that's when things just really took off. It allowed uh, me to share my expertise and, you know, share the things that I love talking about digital tech and social media. You guys hear me say that on the videos. And one of the things that YouTube allows for is that comment section, right? So if I put up a video on YouTube, you guys can go into not only the description section where I link to everything, you know, products that I'm using, uh, different softwares that I may talk about, discount codes are in there, all kinds of stuff is in, is in that description section, right? But that comment section is where you guys have an opportunity to give me your feedback on the video. You know, was it helpful? Was there something missing? And it allows you to ask questions, right? And so I do my absolute best to try to get back to all the comments and all the questions that are posted in there because you guys are getting value, right? So I want to continue to give you value. Now, with this show, with the Mondays, every Monday now, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this time allows me to answer those questions in real time. All right. So if you have questions that may need more context to it, this is a time to make sure that you go ahead and ask them. OK, because being able to do this in real time is a lot different than recording a video, because sometimes you just kind of forget, you know, maybe a step or two there. So really going to enjoy doing it at this time. And like I said, Looking forward to bringing on some guests. You know, Chris is in the chat. He's going to be a guest on here. Um, Carmelita might be a guest on here. Just just throwing that out there real quick. <laughs> Antoine is here. Antoine might be a guest on here. So if you guys um, have some people that you would love for me to interview and talk to about their journey when it comes to live streaming, about tech, about social media, let me know. Um, let me know by, you know, shooting me an email or putting that here in the comment section so we can take note of that. All right. Let me make sure that I didn't miss any questions over here. See what you guys are talking about here in the chat. Um, Charles said, I have a restaurant looking to live stream concerts. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, they definitely can do that there. That is definitely uh, a value add <laughs> for sure. Um, you, you know, the outdoor venues have definitely been trying to figure out live streaming, you know, how to set it up, the software, the equipment, everybody been trying to figure out this live streaming thing. The, the hybrid conferences are a huge thing now. And so that that would definitely be something um, that you could do. Let me know, Charles, is, is, is are you in the space where you would provide that service as well? I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. Mr. Riley's World says, I see you are using a Mac Mini. Uh, what is the hub underneath it? Let me grab that hub from Amazon so you guys can check that out. So underneath my Mac mini here now, again, I don't have all my camera angles set up. So anybody that's just joining, all my cameras are still in the case. Um, 
But underneath the Mac Mini, it's a, called a Satachi Hub. Now, there is a newer one available than the one I have, but I'll share in the uh, I'll share in the chat here the one I do have. So it's S A T E C H I Hub. And so I'll put that in the YouTube chat. Now, the one that I, I think I actually put in the updated one. Let me see if this was the one that's the updated one. And I'll tell you the difference between the two here. Okay. Yeah. So the one I put in is the updated one. And what I mean by the updated one is mine allows me to connect my USB C, three USB ports, and my SD cards and a headphone jack in the front. But mine doesn't have the ability to increase the hard drive space or actually put a hard drive in it. The new version allows you to put in a hard drive or an, uh, a stick rather into it. So I'll show it here on Amazon so that you can see it. So this is the upgraded model. Um, but there is another model, the one I have that had came out before where um, it doesn't have the ability to expand your hard drive. So anybody that's on my Mac side and you guys know about the new M1 Mac minis, you can't ex expand the hard drive. Whatever you buy, that's what that's what it is, okay? So if you want to expand your hard drive, um, people have been using hubs underneath, and there's another manufacturer, I can't recall the name offhand, but the Satachi one just released it where you can expand that. Now, as you can see here, I have external hard drives plugged in the front right now. Um, got a lot of video footage from this conference. So I'm getting ready to um, upload those to the cloud and go through some video editing and all that good stuff. So quite a few different hard drives sitting on the desk today. Um, let me go back up here. Let's see. Antoine says, I like your lighting. My ring light works great, but leaves uh, a ring in my glasses. Yeah, so what I don't use, well, let me grab here. I don't wear glasses, but I do wear my blue light blocking glasses from time to time. And occasionally I'll wear it when I'm live streaming, but it really just depends if I actually remember to put them on. So yeah, ring lights can cause that glare. Um, and you see the actual ring in in the glasses. So it's all about like the positioning of the lighting. Now I use panel lights and I think Antoine, you're familiar with it because you see me here um, put videos on YouTube and also on Amazon Live that I've talked about. But I use a panel light that's just off to my right side. And then I have this uh, big soft box that you guys can see right here. So it helps in the way the light reflects. Now you can see a little bit of the reflection here, but you don't see necessarily an actual ring. Um, but by positioning my lights a little bit better here, um, it would help to alleviate a lot of that reflection. So um, the ring lights are kind of, they're more difficult to work with when it comes to trying to get the ring out of it. So look into like a soft, a soft box, similar to what I have up here, or like an LED panel, because this allows the light to be more dispersed um, more evenly. So you can definitely check that out. Um, so Chris, he said he's DJing that meet and greet. So awesome. Awesome. So if you guys want to, you guys should definitely come. If you're in the DMV area, definitely, I would recommend you come in. It's a, it's an experience, um, um, to be able to network and, and kind of, you know, see us in person. Um, I know I get a lot of questions. I can't, I can't wait to teach on some of the stuff that, um, you guys have seen on YouTube. Um, specifically, you know, you guys have seen uh, me talk about equipment that was sponsored. Um, you guys have heard me today talk about how Melon App is sponsoring the live stream. So I used to think this was a far fetched thing that you had to have hundreds of thousands of followers and you had to be an influencer, like defined as an influencer. But there are so many different um, businesses and opportunities for you guys to use live streaming and not just go live, but also 
have companies and brands reach out to you to facilitate going live, giving you the equipment that's needed to go live because you're not going live just to talk. You're, you're going live to an audience of people. And when you have an audience of people that are going to listen to you and they they like you, they love you, they, they trust you, the brands take notice of that. So I'm not going to get on my brand deal kick tonight, but if you go live, there are incentives to going live outside of just, you know, talking about what it is that you do. There are some benefits to going live. It's it's different than doing pre-recorded content because that live allows you to have that interaction. And I think it's a it's a it's a big win win. Um, let me check my comments here. I got to get used to checking my YouTube comments again, y'all. Um because you can check them. What's pretty cool though is is Melon um, allows you to bring in your comments into their platform. So it's just a little off screen for you guys to see, but it allows me to see all my comments right on the right hand side. Because and and I'm not getting older. I refuse to get like older in my mind. But like on YouTube, my comments are really small. And if you're live streaming, you want things to work as simple as possible and easy. Melon has the comments nice and big so I can see them from like a distance. Now I have this big old 49 inch monitor and being able to actually read the comments rather than like squinting at the YouTube comments is a big benefit. So let me scroll up here on YouTube so I can make sure that I got all the comments for you guys. So Dan says... What's going on, Dan? First of all, he says, good to see you on. I just got that mic, the NTG this weekend and using it um, on stream for the first time. Are you using USB uh, or something else? So microphone, Dan's referring to shotgun NTG um, USB. So right now I'm not using it connected USB. So my USB is is un is unhooked from it. But I do connect it. I used to connect it to my computer directly through USB, but right now I am just going the audio cable into my ATEM as microphone one. And I took this microphone for the conference I just did this past weekend. And we used it, we used it a couple times to capture the audio in the Zoom. So I won't talk about that concept because it, it might confuse a few people, but we needed to capture the room audio for one of the Zoom uh, virtual speakers. And so I actually used it for that too. So I love the fact that not only is this like a desk microphone, but you can also use it as a shotgun microphone as well. So I like the dual purpose uh, feature on this microphone. Uh, it says I'm definitely going to try it to make it at the, to the conference. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let me see here. He said, is that a Mr. Camera Junkie shirt? Love it. I think it is. Now, I can't remember whose shirt it is because there's so many awesome creators that uh, we're all connected to. Uh, and, and I think it is, but the shirt says upgrade your skills. So I can't remember whose it is because now I done got confused on whose shirt is whose because there's so many awesome creators. But definitely love supporting uh, other creators, right? So, you know, the people that you know, are also on YouTube, also on Facebook, on social media that are dropping so many valuable nuggets on live streaming in general. Definitely love to support them where I can. Um, Dan says pros and cons. USB seems to have slight audio lag, but sounds better. 3.5 through my ATEM has the ability to sync the lag, change the levels, but doesn't sound as good. Yeah, I haven't I haven't paid enough close attention to it, but the lag is a big deal for me too uh, when I go USB. So you guys will probably see me swap between equipment when I go live just to show and explain and, you know, educate. And I do notice when I go USB, the I do have to set on the audio delay. So I'm going to probably primarily try to go with my mics that have a 3.5 or convert to 3.5 to go into the ATEM. So I don't have to do any type of software changes um, anywhere for the lag. So um, that is a good point you bring up there, Dan. All right. Did I miss any questions here? I think I got everything. All right. So those of you guys that are just jumping on here, um, welcome. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Monty Weaver here. And uh, tonight is episode one of our weekly show uh, sponsored by Melon App. So I, I pinned them in the comments section. Uh, you can check them out at melonapp.live. They are a live streaming web-based software that makes it easy to go live. Now, you guys know I have used a lot of live streaming platforms, okay? It's no secret. I've used a bunch of them. Um, but sometimes you just want something that just works and it's just a little bit easier. And, you know, when I when I show people about live streaming, getting started in live streaming, easy wins, simple wins, because there's a, there's a lot of cases where live streaming and tech isn't someone's main thing that they do. They just need what they need to execute on what they need to talk about. That's it. They just need something that works, right? So Melon App just works. So um, shout out to Melon App for sponsoring these weekly shows so that we can jump together here on social media in a live setting, answer questions, have some fun. And of course, you guys uh, learn some things and uh, maybe we'll even get some more sponsors to send us some more equipment as well. So um, I actually got home this weekend and or yeah, this weekend and had boxes from Amazon that were here and we got some new cameras. Uh, matter of fact, I had cameras before I left. So I had a new PTZ camera before I left. So you guys will see a video on that. Got a new video switcher as well. So um, you guys stay tuned for that. So you guys have seen this ATEM. If you follow me here on Amazon or if you follow me on Amazon, if you follow me here on YouTube, you've seen me talk about this video switcher. So I received another one from a company. I won't I won't let the cat out the bag on that one yet. You guys will just have to stay tuned. Um, so I'm looking forward to unboxing in that and, and checking it out. Now, I had never heard of that particular brand before. And when I looked into them, I was like, man, they create a lot of pretty cool equipment for live streaming. So I have the switcher. I have the camera up there. And then I also received two more drones. So on Amazon Live, I did an unboxing of a drone and showed up. Uh, this weekend and there are two more drones I have so I have three of their drones so we'll be talking about those and if you guys haven't seen live streamings with drones it's pretty cool and you know it's something that's possible for sure where you throw that drone up in the sky and bring in a live feed into your production so um, I don't know if we'll be able to demo that live on a show like this but I'll probably try to create a video to demonstrate you know, just the possibilities that you can do. So got new drones. Uh, also received another PTZ camera from Zego. So shout out to Zego. So you guys saw a YouTube video where I did an unboxing of their camera. They were nice enough to send over a second PTZ camera. So uh, we will figure out a way to incorporate those into not only this workspace, but also you guys will see the behind the scenes of setups with those cameras. So um they, they definitely allow for, for me to show you guys what's possible with video and different use cases as well, because you guys all have different setups, different configurations. So just knowing what's available to you, hopefully that is helpful for you guys. So um, let me check out here. So Emmanuel says, what made you choose YouTube instead of Facebook or any other platform to live stream on? So awesome question, Emmanuel. So for me, um, what I, when I, Alicio, I see you, Alicio's there, we live. I was, I was going to wait to get down to the comments to Alicio because Alicio was going to throw me off because whenever you see a content creator show up on your live stream, it's like a massive sign of respect. Um, so shout out to my guy, Alicio Way. Um, make sure you guys check out his uh, YouTube channel as well because Alicio is a regular on YouTube. Matter of fact, I might be impeding on Alicio's time, but like tonight was the only, Mondays at 7 p.m. are like the only time I can go live. So uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so you guys make sure you talk, check out Content Ecosystem. I was a guest on Alicio's show as well. So make sure you go, definitely go check out that episode. All right, go check out the episode of me on Elysio's show. So um, you guys stand by because Elysio will be a guest on this show as well. Um, so let me give back up here to Emmanuel's question. He said, what made you choose YouTube instead of Facebook or any other platform to live stream on? Now, this is a great question. And the reason that I did jump down to Elysio is because 
he created a video about this same thing and I created one as well. And I can't remember if we did, we did, I think at least you'll uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you did your video first and not too long after that I had did a video, but we both saw each other's videos and we were talking about YouTube over Facebook. Now, granted, we, we all understand that there's so many people on both platforms, right? But one of the advantages that I found with YouTube is the fact that my content is searchable and people can find it. When, when I decided to make the move in, in January, 2020 to YouTube, it was because of the fact that I had did an entire series on Facebook. I did a month long series on Facebook about what was something that was new at the time, which were Facebook messenger bots and automation and Facebook messenger and messenger in general, AI and automation, that stuff is huge. It's a game changer. It's a time saver, right? And so I did this whole entire training series on how to set them up, how to add tags, how to set up the, the automation workflows and everything. And later that year, at matter of fact, bootstrapping your way to success in 2019, because I, I spoke there in 2019, I had a gentleman, he said, hey, Monty, this is my light bulb moment, you guys. So this is the transition. He said, Monty, he said, the series the series that you did on Facebook about the automation was awesome, right? He said, can you send me the replays? All right, I want y'all to let this sink in. He He loved it. He wanted to see the replays. He wanted to see the replays because obviously he couldn't watch them at the times I went live or the timing of the videos just wasn't something he needed right then and there, right? Not this, he didn't say that he never needed the content, but when he saw me at that conference, he was ready for the content, but I couldn't even get him the content because we know how Facebook works. I would have to scroll and scroll months back up for when I did the series and I would have to find them all in order and it was it would have been a nightmare to do it. And so that was my light bulb moment to if I would have just put the same content on YouTube, it was there. Like all he would have had to do is type in my name and Facebook Messenger bots, right? And he would have found all the videos on YouTube. It allows me to make playlists. So if you watch episode one, you can watch episode two, episode three, and categorize them all together. It would allow me to not have to worry about, especially because it was free content. I wasn't charging for the content. I just wanted to share my knowledge and expertise on it. I wouldn't have had to put them, you know, download the videos off Facebook, put them in the sales page and all that that goes along with it. So YouTube just has a lot more functionality for the end user to allow them to find the content when it it's best for them because YouTube is a search engine, right? And so when he was ready to find out about messenger bots, we could have just typed in Facebook messenger bots automation and my videos would have showed up. Now, here's the other part that really, really, really made me switch. Now, he wasn't the only person, okay? He was not the only person that could have benefited from those videos. Facebook's reach, it's limited. It, it's limited to the people that follow you. It's limited by the people that are friends with you. And it's limited because of the fact that YouTube, Facebook is not going to show your content to everyone. So the only people that would have received or that did receive that information are the people that were live or watch the replay within a couple days, right? Because after a couple days, you don't see anybody's posts or anything like that unless someone goes in and re-comments or re-shares or something like that. So the reach on Facebook is just really, really low. Where on YouTube, if I go and type in Facebook automation and you look at the views of those videos, they're tremendous. So in January, I just made that decision. I was like, I'm going to switch over and put my content on YouTube which has allowed me to connect with so many new people. People have been able to connect with me because they didn't, they never knew who I was. So when you, when you figure out, or when you, when you think about, I had 5,000 Facebook friends, cause that's the max, right? I wasn't using a business page. So 5,000 Facebook personal friends over however long I've been using Facebook. And now over 21,000, 
thousand YouTube subscribers in less than two years, like, wow. And I go live less. Well, I'll go live more now. Thanks to Melon apps. Shout out to Melon app dot live. So I'll go live more on YouTube or on Facebook or on YouTube now. And people can find my content. Like if they're looking for what it is that I talk about, they can find it. They can type in a search bar and find it. So it's a lot, a little lot of reason I've, I've made that switch over to YouTube and sponsorships and brand deals, y'all. Uh, we're going to talk about that on one of these shows. Okay. We're going to dedicate a whole show to I, Maybe that'll be the show I do with Chris because being on YouTube has allowed brands and sponsors to find me, to see me. I have been live, you guys, for over four years. I've hit the live button for over four years. I've created graphics on my screens. I've done fire. I've showed videos. I've done screen share for over four years. But nobody really knew I existed because I was on Facebook. If I would have put, I can't even imagine if I would have put my live streaming videos, how to live stream videos on YouTube four years ago, I know this channel would be well over a hundred thousand subscribers because when everybody started looking for it, then guess where everybody started going? They started going to YouTube, right? So YouTube has been a tremendously uh, different platform than how Facebook functions. And so that's one of the main reasons that I'm, that I'm on uh, YouTube more so than Facebook. Uh, let me scroll back up here because I know I probably missed some things here. Um, Elicio say optimize, make it searchable, organize playlists, monetize. Oh, how did I forget that other part of monetization? Oh my gosh. When you figure out that you can put your content on YouTube and get monetized. Now, and Facebook has opened up some monetization, but YouTube has so many different monetization uh uh, aspects to it. So super chats are a big thing. So if you guys like, if you guys wanted to donate to this live stream, you could actually hit the super chat or the super sticker and donate funds to this live stream. And people have done that in the past. Carmelita's on here. I know Carmelita was like one of the very first person to give me a super chat. And it's pretty cool when people just say, Hey, I want to financially thank you. And you can do it like live in real time, like on Facebook, you, it ain't happening, right? So people can literally finance and help run these shows and help creators like myself go live. Like it, it really does help us create the content, spend the time to get it ready, get the equipment, learn, <laughs> go to conferences, like all that and bring it back. And um, it's so <laughs> being able to monetize that way, the description section, putting links to affiliates, websites like an Amazon, brand deals and sponsorships. You guys, Melon App is compensating me to talk about things that I love to talk about. That's a crazy concept in itself. I love talking about live streaming. I love talking about tech. They see that and they say, hey, we want to make sure that you can talk about that and not have to think about the financial part of it. Because we know it's going to take your time. We know it's going to take resources. We know it's going to take some things to actually do that. So what we want to do is not only compensate you for doing it, but we're going to allow you to use our platform to do it on. OK, so literally I'm going live from Melon App software and talking about things that I love. So, yeah, at least you'll say monetization. That's a big deal, guys. That's a big deal. So you don't have to be a techie to get any of these avenues. You can do what it is that you love doing and YouTube will reward you in so many different ways. I was watching a, a, uh, a, uh, a church ministry and the speaker kept receiving these offerings like boom, $50, $100, just over and over and over again. People were just donating through YouTube. So it's amazing. Shout out to Alicio. Who's over here donating to the live stream? <laughs> Shout out to Alicia. See you guys, five dollars right there. So, you YouTube allows for that to happen. Like, so if I was if I was on any other platform right now that I can think of, no one could like hit a button and say, "Hey, I want to donate right now to this stream in real time." So, you know, a huge shout out to Alicia for that. Um, and that's just one of the benefits, another benefits of being on uh, YouTube here. 
let me see what else we got going on here in the chat. Uh, I got my melon over there a little bit. So I'm going to try to read it here from YouTube real quick. Uh, Antoine said, YouTube is the bomb. I need to get going. Yeah, get going because Antoine, I know you live stream on Facebook. So definitely, definitely figure out a way to incorporate live streaming on YouTube. It's it. The only difference is, y'all, really from a technical aspect is going live to a different platform. It's just one different platform. You're doing the exact same thing. You're still going to hit live. You're still going to talk to your audience. They're still going to do everything, right? You're just going to go live to a different platform. And once you learn how YouTube works, oh my gosh, game changer, game changer, right? Um, let me see here. Alicia says Facebook is a captive platform that holds you your valuable intellectual intellectual property hostage. Yeah. I wish, man, if I wish I could go back and like just scour all my content from Facebook and like recreate it into YouTube content, but it would take forever. It just it just be way easier just to redo the videos here on YouTube. But yeah, there's so there's so much content. I wish you guys could see some of the videos that I did years ago about live streaming. I really do. Um, my people on Periscope have seen it, but I really wish I had those videos from years ago where I had, instead of having like these nice fancy DSLR mirrorless cameras, guys, I used to have webcams and they still work. You know, you can go live and I had multiple camera angles with my webcams. Literally, I had Logitech C930 webcams. They were multiple angles. And I was doing all of this stuff years ago, y'all. So um, this live streaming thing has really taken off with everything that's happening in the world right now. And last year, we see so many people getting into live streaming and it's really accelerating. And so definitely, if you have not started live streaming, get started live streaming, guys. Um, and if you need simple software to do it, check out Melon App. Because like I said, you, it it doesn't cost you anything to start live streaming. Like really doesn't. You, you, re, you either already have a cell phone or you already have a computer. And if you don't have a webcam, get a webcam. But if you have a laptop, <laughs> the camera's built into your laptop and you just get started. OK, and that's all you need. You don't have to go out and run out and buy all this fancy gear and equipment unless you want to level up certain parts of your live stream. You want to prove the audio, improve the video, things like that. But you can just get started live streaming. Miss Bernade, what's going on? Oh my gosh, look at Bernade. Oh, look at that. She has, uh, I'm looking at the, the little character here just dancing. <laughs> and because on, on Melon, it says lemon character and baby lemon twirling around in the air hugging <laughs> and so i was like huh so i had to look at the comment here on youtube i appreciate you thank you for donating to the stream here um i love having you as part in, in uh, part of the mastermind community because we've been you, you already know we talk about live streaming we talk about youtube we talk about everything in there and so uh one of the more recent things we're talking about these vera poles that i use and i'll bring those out in a show where it allows you to kind of eliminate some of the space that you have um uh, and actually hang lights from the ceiling versus you know tripods on the floor take up a lot of room space you guys i have a tripod on the floor just off camera here and this huge soft box is on the tripod right behind me and so it takes up a lot of space. But if you can uh, eliminate the, the space being taken up on the floor, you can, or one of the ways you can do that is by doing stuff going vertical, right? And so we were just recently talking about the Veripole. So we still got to connect during our mastermind on, um, on that as well to make sure we get that over to you. So appreciate the, the $50 donation to the stream. Um, let me jump up here to Marvin's uh comment our church um our church stream using the canon vixia r f h f r 800 same cameras my church uses too by the way um we use the one ptz as our main and then we use two of the canon cameras for our side angles um the canon cameras used to be our main cameras before um we upgraded it and says we need a second camera but on a budget do you have any recommendations Quite honestly, I would say get another one of the same camera because the Vixia cameras are, 
they, they're like the lowest cost camera that I would recommend. And one of the reasons I say get the same camera is because the lenses will be the same and the color will match. Because once you start getting multiple cameras, different types, different manufacturers, and even in some cases, the same camera, but different um, like zoom focuses, um, you'll notice that the the picture will look different because of the lighting and just the lenses. So for example, I use PTZ optics, uh, PTZ cameras as well, but the 12 X and the 20 X, there is a noticeable difference in the lens. So if they're side by side, looking at the same thing, the color is different on both of them because the lenses are different. Now, if I had two, 20x ptz cameras the lenses are the same on the 20x versions and so you wouldn't see a difference so i would recommend going with the same camera and until you're ready to upgrade to a bigger jump then go something that would give you a higher end quality where if that secondary camera looks a little different it's okay because it's like more of a cutaway shot but if it, if we're talking budget is a big factor in this i would just go with the same camera um, and, and just have two of the same looks because the, the, they're great cameras. Um, like I said, my church uses them and maybe you can spend any remaining budgeted allocated money on the camera on just some additional lighting to help improve the quality of that camera. Uh, Emmanuel says, thank you for your honest and clear answer. No problem. No problem. Um, uh, Carmelita says, we'll, we'll value your expertise. Carmelita, did you go out and get that, that ZV camera? Um, let me know if you if you upgraded your camera, because uh, one of the uh, one of the the ladies that was at the conference um, this week in Florida, I gotta fix my shirt here, y'all. I think my wife is gonna get me. She's gonna tell me my shirt was not fixed. So let me fix my shirt real quick. Um, one of the uh, ladies that was at the conference um, had had. A, a ZV, ZV1, not the new one, um, ZV1 camera, which is an awesome camera, not only for live streaming, but like vlogging and stuff like that. And so uh, Chris and I, we were, we were trying to wrap up for the day, but we needed to get a couple more testimonials. And so when I, we saw the camera sitting on her, on her desk or on the table rather, and we were like, it's a nice camera, but she said that she had like never used it months okay she bought the camera and had it for months even look y'all she brought it to the conference but never even used it okay and we were talking about that camera and it, it's just amazing how how a lot of people they get started with buying stuff but they don't actually hit the live button they don't actually hit the record button so i don't want you guys to be people buying stuff but you're not going to actually use it and uh put it in place okay so make sure you guys do that um but yeah carmelita let me know if you got your camera because uh, i know you'll use your camera uh then so that's why because the, the camera i recommended to you is is the newer version the zv zv 10 so um Definitely let me know. Um, Clay Jr. says, hey, Monty, first time catching your live show. That's because this is the first live show. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be doing these live. Um, I, I used to teach a lot on Periscope. I used to teach a lot on Facebook. But as you know, as life happens, you get busy and then you just have to prioritize. And so um, that's why I was just doing more recorded content because uh, going live in the evenings is another, you know, a day, another time I would have to dedicate to going live. And so that time um, is definitely uh, needs to be prioritized. And so when Melon, Melon app reached out to me, they asked, you know, about, you know, how we could work together. And so it, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was a live show. Just got to figure out how to do the live show and how to make it work. And so shout out to to Melon App. Um, again, you guys can check them out in the pinned comments, in the pin chat, melonapp.live. Check out the free software. It's web-based software. So you literally just create an account like in a couple seconds and you can actually just go live. And so we are collaborating to do these weekly live shows. So uh, if you guys have questions, like I said at the beginning, make sure you ask those questions while we do these live shows. And if you have suggestions and feedback, all that good stuff, uh, we could take note of. And definitely 
if there's different content creators that you guys want me to interview or specialists in their field. I already have quite a few names lined up, uh, shows that I have been a guest on. I definitely want to get those people on my show and ask them some questions, put them in the hot seat as it pertains to video and live video, because I really like, I really like understanding the mindset of people going live, like what made them want to go live, why are they going live and um, the equipment that they use. You know, I'm a, I'm a techie, so I kind of want to know the equipment that you use to go live, not going out and buying everything. I just want to know what you use. So um, so people like Alicia in the chat, like Chris in the chat, they'll definitely be guests. Um, you know, me and Chris are Amazon live streamers, so I definitely want him to talk about that because that's an, another platform that you can go live on. So you guys let me know in the comment section too, what, what's your favorite platform to go live on? I don't care if it's Instagram live, LinkedIn live, Amazon live, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. <laughs> what platform do you guys like to go live? Let me know in the comments. Definitely interested to see um, what the, what the, uh, what the audience is. Right. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Dipher says, good advice. Appreciate that. Al Rick says, good night. I'm late. What topic you're dealing with? Yeah, talking about live streaming for beginners, getting started with live streaming. Uh, Michael says, was wanting to reboot my live streaming and don't know how. Thanks for doing this. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, so um, if you guys have some questions, um, oh my gosh, we're at the top of the hour already. That's a fast hour. Like if you guys have never live streamed before, uh, it may seem intimidating. Like I got to go live for five minutes. Oh my God. I got to go live for 15 minutes. That's a long time. Once you get started doing this live stream thing, it goes by quick. And if you have a super engaged audience, like you guys are, it makes it go by even faster. So, uh, let me kind of finish up checking out these com comments here. Uh, Charles says YouTube for church service. Uh, Mr. Riley's world says favorite live stream platform. Sometimes it is Facebook for ministry. It's YouTube. Awesome. What I like, um, also about like Melon app is the fact that you can connect Facebook you can connect YouTube and go live from the same platform. So you don't have to jump between multiple platforms. You can just use one, connect them, go live and their scheduling tool as well, because I get a lot of questions in the comments about scheduling your live streams. And Melon app has that built in where you can select your date, select your time, select your platform and put in the, the title, the description, all that information ahead of time, the thumbnail image, all of that is done ahead of time. So um, they definitely make the platform easy to use. So whether you're beginning, mid, mid level or, you know, someone that has live streamed for four years like myself and have seen quite a few different platforms, they make it really easy to, to get started and go live. Um, let's see here. Carmen Lita says, this was very valuable. I have a class to do, but looking forward to seeing you, seeing everyone Monday at 7 p.m. Thank you, Carmen Lita, for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah. Again, guys, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on my YouTube channel. So go ahead, mark your calendar. We'll be doing this for a while. So, um, best time to ask me questions in real time. I always tell people, I always tell people, if you catch me live, that is the time to ask your question. All right. If you Try to catch me outside of live. You might get sent an invoice. So catch me live um, so we can ask questions, answer questions here. Um, and, I'll, and I'll do my best to demo in real time, too. Now, I am I'm no stranger to demoing in real time. So do understand that if I demo in real time, it's something cuts off or something like that. You're just going to have to log back into the stream once I get everything back up, because I will unplug in a minute if, if I if I'm able to unplug it and kind of show you how it works in real time, because like it's sitting right next to me, I'll definitely do it. All right. So let me take a couple more questions. I'll end at Samuel's question. So let me jump up here. Um, Emmanuel says the ATEM you use has a dedicated hardware encoder built in more secure. So why do you prefer to use the computer to live stream since you run the risk of crashing or other funny stuff happening? So I've, I've done it multiple ways. So I, I just, I don't really have a preference now. I prefer to do it this way because Melon app is compensating me to go live and to be live and to educate you. So it's not even a, a hardware software thing is it's a, hey, 
hey, we want to help you reach an audience of people to educate them. That's the that's the precedence and the priority of why I'm doing it this way. I have used the ATEM and the hardware coder and do it that way too. So it's a right, it's, it, I don't know a better way to put it. It's how I feel at the time or what I'm doing it with. So when I do client gigs, they may already have a software that they prefer to use. So I'm obligated to use the software that they prefer to use. So I have to do it that way. So being flexible is what I do. Um, when I want to go live to Amazon Live, the encoder doesn't connect to Amazon because of their settings. So I can't use the encoder on the hardware because I can't configure the ATEM to match the settings for Amazon. So there's a lot of different reasons I choose to do it. But what I tell people is do what works for you. <laughs> do what works for you. So I definitely um, um, am aware of it. But my use case is I, I just don't really want to go into the software all the time and configure again because I'm not here. I'm I don't sit at this desk and use my ATEM for this setup all the time. This thing moves, you guys. Okay, so I do things that make it easier for me to take it away and come back because I I've been gone from the house for like four days, so I had to get this set up like the fastest possible to go live today tonight. So different use cases for it for sure. Uh, Alric says, hey, Monty, I'm using Zoom to go live with a webcam 1080. What do I need to have to show two cameras at once? So with Zoom, um, natively, the platform only allows you to select one camera at a time. So you would need some type of switcher. Now, if you're using the webcams, it's USB. So you, you would have to just use the you would have to click in zoom to switch your cameras that's going to be the easiest way for you to do it because there there aren't usb switchers out there that i'm aware of um there are probably some ways to get around it and jerry rig it but i wouldn't recommend that um so if you're using two webcams plug both of them into your computer at the same time and then when you want to switch you just select your video source and select which camera that you want to use um that would be the easiest way to do that. Uh, Mr. Rowley's World says, how is Melon app different from Restream? Um, they're, they're pretty comparable when it comes to different features. Um, they're both web-based, which is something that I really like because I'm very familiar with both of the platforms. And I really tell people, dive in and try them to see which ones they like the best. Now, I, I like Melon because it allows me to have the different layouts and um, schedule my streams ahead of time. Some things that Restream also allows you to do. I like the interface in the chat because it's bigger on Restream. Um, but definitely dive into both of them. I believe they both have an option that you can check out for free. Um, I know Melon is also, if you guys are familiar with Streamlabs OBS, which is a install platform that you install on your computer there's a lot of functionality inside of that and if you guys are familiar with logitech and logitech or melon is owned by logitech or something like that so um logitech is a brand that i use a lot of their equipment so when i saw melon and the association with logitech i was like yeah let me check out this platform because i think there's some huge potential in what this platform will be able to offer um <laughs> the diverse said because melon is way easier that too that too there's definitely less buttons and less confusion on like what you can connect and how you can connect it so it, it is easier especially if you're a beginner beginner um you won't get overwhelmed by it at all it's and it, they've got a lot more of they do have a lot more like um which uh, they call background effects and overlays and being able to change the color. There's a lot more customization that you can do in Melon that a lot of the live stream web-based live stream platforms don't have you do. So um, that that's another thing too. We're I'm going to be doing some tutorial videos and putting those on YouTube so you guys can check those out um, when they're uploaded. So stay tuned for that. Um, Samuel says, hi, Monty, uh, much, much appreciate your role in the media ministry. God bless. I saw your page on Amazon highlighting a 
variety of products. If I buy from there, does it help your channel? Yes, it does. So if you watch me on Amazon Live, when I go live on Amazon and you click on anything there, it helps the channel. If you click on anything in the description section of my videos, it helps the channel as well. So appreciate that. You're not, you're not required to by any stretch of the means, but if you do click, it doesn't cost you anything, but it and, and it helps the channel grow as well. Um, I do have an Amazon like storefront. So if you go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Monty Weaver, you can see everything there. I actually be going live. You guys sneak peek. I'm going to go live on Amazon uh, with new iPhone 13 cases this week. So um, check it out. And, and I'll be featuring a drone on Amazon live this week too. So those will be 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this week. I can't remember which days off the top of my head, but I'll be there too. Um, Malcolm Ross says, what camera do you use? So I use a variety of cameras um, and I'll pull them out over the course of these live shows. So right now I'm using the A6400, Sony A6400 there, using the Sony A6400 here. Um, right above up here, I have a Osbot AI tracking webcam right off, off screen here. I have a PTZ optics webcam. Up there, I have a PTZ Optics uh, box cam in my cases, those Pelican cases. You can see the red and the black back there. Those are my Pelican cases. I have two PTZ cameras and I have two PTZ Optics cameras in there, one Zego camera in there. And then I'll be unboxing another PTZ camera up there. There's a PTZ by Zego back here as well. So I got a whole bunch of them back here um, uh, for sure. So I got a few different cameras that I use. Uh, let me wrap up these questions here. Um, Phil says, does YouTube have minimum requirements for your channel to be able to go live? You can go live from your desktop, no requirements. When it comes to going live from your mobile, I think you have to have a thousand followers. I can't remember the exact number, but going live from your desktop, anybody can go live from the desktop to YouTube. Alert says, that's what I do to switch. Uh, thanks, but was wondering if there was uh, any other devices. Yeah, so uh, with the webcam question, so not that I'm aware of. I can, I'll do some homework, and if anybody is aware of anything for USB switching, let me know. Um, <laughs> Antoine says, we need a calendar to keep up with you. All eyes on Monty. So one of the things I am working on doing is text message alerts. So when I go live, um, text message will be sent out to you to let you know I'm getting ready to go live. And so that's one of the things I'm working on. So those of you that contribute to the channel by watching the videos, those of you that contribute by shopping using the uh, referral links, those of you that contribute by showing up here um, on a weekly basis, those of you that contribute by financially uh, giving like uh, Alicio and Brene do, um, that helps to add more resources to the channel, not only software, but personnel to help uh, do those things. So that is one of the things that is high on my radar priority list is to integrate text message alerts so that you can just, you know, uh, subscribe to the text message list and be sent a notification when I go live. So you guys don't miss any shows or any of those major updates too, right? So awesome. So episode one is in the books. I appreciate you guys for showing up here um, on YouTube and uh, hanging out with me for the last hour. So just a quick recap. If you guys um, came in a little bit late um, every Monday, we're going to be going live here on the channel and talking about live streaming, bringing on some guests talking about hardware, talking about equipment and really just helping you helping you, helping all of us get started in this live streaming thing and getting the tech right. Uh, we may even talk some social media stuff as well, strategies, things like that. Um, bringing in guests, some friends that I have that, you know, are huge in this space when it comes to content creation um, that are doing some amazing things. So shout out to Melanap. You guys make sure you go check them out. Melanap.live for sponsoring this. They're sponsoring all these shows, guys, um, and uh, allowing us to have a platform, a space, and a time to show up and do what we do. Uh, and it's, it's a pleasure to collaborate with them on this project. Thanks for all of you guys for showing up. And uh, until next Monday, you guys, 
Uh, have a great rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you guys in next week's show. If you haven't already liked this video, make sure you click that thumbs up. It does a huge, huge benefit to the channel, and look forward to seeing you guys in future episodes. So, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll talk soon.